Hi, my name's Brad and welcome to our live Thai. I chose to live in Thailand and I love living in Thailand, but it's not a safe place to live. In terms of road fatalities, it's the second most dangerous place in the world. So please listen to my top tips for keeping you safe driving in Thailand. The majority of people in Thailand will rack up multiple traffic offences every time they get behind the wheel. If you take away only one thing from watching this video, I hope it's the fact that you need to be careful around traffic lights. A lot of Thai people, both in cars and on motorbikes, will take off before the light actually turns green and they'll run red lights. It happens so frequently. I drive in Bangkok every day and I see it happen every day. Another anomaly that you may have to get used to is even if the light is red, and some traffic lights, if you're in the left hand lane, you can still proceed. Here you can see we've gone through the red light and now we're merging with cars from our right hand side that have got the green arrow. Again here, we can drive through the red light simply because we're in the left hand lane. Here I've stopped and I'm waiting for the, the light to turn green. The colour of the lights is of no consequence to the motorcycle riders. Even with a small police station directly on our right hand side, even that is not a deterrent to the bike riders. The most exciting traffic lights in Thailand are the ones that always flash amber. I've been travelling on this road for over a year and I've never seen the lights red or green. Same situation here, always flashing amber. The motorcycles can come, cars can turn right in front of you. It's not an issue, you, you just got to do what you can to get through it. Cars just don't like stopping. Here this guy, he's got trouble in front of him so he just moves over into my lane. Doesn't look, just moves. This is another common thing that tyres will do. The black car that was in front of me wants to turn right but doesn't want to wait for the cars in front. So I moved over into the left lane to turn right. Is that just crazy? The toll roads in Thai are cheap and for the most part they're a very effective way of getting around. But due to the high speeds and the high volume of traffic, you do have to be careful. We're about to merge on what you would think is a normal three lane highway. The tyres will turn the three lane highway into four lanes and constantly drive in the breakdown lane. Regardless of whether the traffic is heavy or the traffic is light, the breakdown lane is sometimes a lot of drivers first choice. The breakdown lane ends up being the high speed lane, whereas it should be on the right. A, a funny situation is when someone actually uses the breakdown lane because they've broken down. It causes all sorts of chaos. The, the tyres don't know how to deal with it drive really slowly just to check out what's going on. Traffic police will position themselves at the exit on tollways to monitor traffic flow and also to hand out fines to vehicles that have uncovered loads. If performing U-turns is something that you're not familiar with or you're a bit apprehensive about performing a U-turn in traffic, you better get used to it. There are tons of them in Thailand, absolutely everywhere and they range from huge sweeping U-turns around a motorway to just your normal U-turn on the street. And they're probably the most dangerous ones on the street because people don't want to stop and you've just got to get around the corner as best you can. There's a small bingle on our right hand side and I would assume it's just because of impatience, perhaps driver being selfish and two cars, two youths have got themselves wedged together. And they have to stop like that until the insurance comes. Large vehicles can be quite intimidating on U-turns and will often just force their way through. After someone's done a U-turn, please be aware that they may quickly want to turn left straight after doing that. And you will always see lazy and selfish drivers it would be so simple for them to turn, do the U-turn from the right-hand lane, but they'll just do it in front of you from the middle lane. Yes, U-turns can take quite some getting used to. 
people wanting to push in to do their U-turn, cars who want to go straight, they don't want to let the people in, trucks coming around the corner, they're big so they just push their way through. You definitely need to get used to it and you definitely need to be patient and take your opportunities to, to go wherever they exist for you. Depending on where you live, you may have to put up with buses that uh, take workers to and from the factory. And there's always government buses to deal with. They're everywhere. As soon as you see an opportunity, you've got to make the turn. You see the car flashing its lights? It's saying that it doesn't want to slow down. Tyres are a kind and generous people, but when they get behind the wheel in Bangkok, something seems to change. The BMW driver has no regard for anyone else. It doesn't matter what anybody else is doing, he wants to get where he's going the quickest. I find that uh, when you're on the tollway, the, the middle lane is the, the most trouble-free way to travel. I very rarely drive in the right-hand lane, and I only switch to the left-hand lane when I know my exit's coming up. Our friend in the BMW is still being bloody annoying to everybody else on the road. We actually get off at the same exit and he finishes up behind me. All his trouble for nothing. He sped up after going through the tolls and he's just about to share his stupidity with another driver. Thank God he's gonna be, I'm gonna be free of him soon. There are no cars behind me for about a, a kilometer, but the guy on my right he wasn't concentrating, he was speeding, and it didn't look to see that there's a U-turn ahead, so it just forces his way over. It wouldn't even enter his mind to actually slip in safely behind me. I'm about to enter the tollway. It's a Friday afternoon, so the traffic's pretty heavy. You see the cars are driving in the, the breakdown lane, so I need to merge in between one of these trucks. Uh, this truck decides he's going to try and overtake on the left, so it pushes me out further. So I move on a bit further and try to get back in. All this time I've got my, my right hand blinker on and I want to slip in behind this little Honda in front of the Jazz. But the red Jazz isn't letting me in. There's, there's nothing JID about the guy driving the red Jazz. Oh, uh, he's, he's got to where he wants to be, so I'll just slip in behind him, I hope it's not an issue. Meanwhile, I've still got cars who are trying to overtake me on my left-hand side. All this nonsense driving just to get onto the freeway, just to get onto the tollway. So I'm waiting for a, a slot in between the trucks so I can get on. And still they come on my left and the breakdown lane and another idiot drives on the left. I'll tell you what, I was swearing a lot that day. It can be very hard to maintain a safe driving distance. There's always someone trying to jump into the gap that you've left between you and the, the car in front. I moved over into the left-hand lane because we've got two lanes that are actually doing a, a, a U-turn coming up very soon. And I've got the same idiot who's jumped in front of me again. I'll always recommend driving in the middle lane if you, you want to have a trouble-free driving experience on the tollway. See the, the semi-trailer on the left? Even a vehicle that big is going to try and drive down the breakdown lane. I, I don't know what goes through their heads. It's early evening on the way home and we stopped at a pedestrian crossing. Remember, tyres don't like stopping at pedestrian crossings. Here this guy's cracked the shits and he's taken off. Didn't like to have to stop for pedestrians. Feels so sorry for him. On our right we have a U-turn, a ute and a motorbike. And I'm hoping that's not a fatal combination. 
The motorcycles T-bone the, the ute, uh, and I'm not sure if the driver's okay or not. When I first started driving in Thailand, I was scared senseless with motorbikes. They come in the opposite direction, they're everywhere around you. I was worried that I was going to knock someone off. Here we, we stopped at lights, and we've got motorbikes coming, going in the correct direction. We've got motorbikes coming back towards us. We've got this guy who's, who's stalled his motorbike, so we've got to wait for him to, to push his bike out of the way. <laughs> it, it never ends with motorbikes. Um, there's just so many of them, and they don't really follow any particular pattern of rules. My advice for driving around motorbikes is, number one, don't panic. And just drive sensibly. Drive what you believe to be the rules and let them work around you. And, uh, and don't get angry if they do cut you off or, because they're going to. They're just going to drive wherever they want to. Just being patient and applying common sense is the only way to deal with having motorbikes surrounding you. These days, I'm much more concerned about idiots in cars than worrying about people on motorbikes. You simply have to expect the unexpected. This bike has just merged into my lane, no indicator. I didn't expect the bike to come over because I'm just about to head over a bridge and it's not legal for the bike to go over the bridge. There's yet another situation with a, a bike and a, a vehicle in front of us. I don't know whether the bike is just broken down or it's an accident. There doesn't seem to be anybody hurt, thankfully. You may be shocked to know that if you don't stop for a pedestrian at a pedestrian crossing, you are breaking the law in Thailand. I think these people are a little shocked that I stopped and they're worried about no, the fact that no one else is going to stop. Here we've got a, another idiot who's no crossing and he wants to cross the road, he's actually standing on the road. And another girl standing in the middle of the road. How do they expect not to get here? Just about to stop at another crossing. I've got a bus that's sitting right on my ass, and I was worried that he was going to hit me if I stopped for these people crossing. Whenever I stop for, uh, p for pedestrians, I put my hazard lights, every time put my hazard lights on. A few weeks ago, I stopped at the crossing that's just up ahead to let a man and his child cross the road who was carrying the child, and a motorbike came up on my inside and knocked them both over. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. They have a crossing guard here protecting the, uh, the pedestrians. It's just a high-speed road, very dangerous for people crossing the road. And I still put my hazard lights on. Essential to do that. Anytime you get behind the wheel in Thailand, you need patience. You also need planning. Understand where you're going and the best way to get there. And understand, if you leave late, you're going to arrive late. You need patience with everyone else that you're sharing the road with. Taxis, tuk-tuks, motorbikes, minibuses, not to mention buses and trucks. If you're easy to get angry on the road, you are going to struggle in Thailand. Look at this guy in front of me. Why can't he turn right from the right-hand lane? Following on from patience, I'll give you an overview of construction in Thailand and how that's affected by Thai time. We're driving onto a bridge and it opened in June 2017 after being under construction for 11 years. Can you imagine living in this area, driving in this area and you have to put up with that construction for 11 years? My wife was dancing in a seat when we first drove over this one kilometre stretch of bridge. She was so excited. If there's roadworks in your area, or the area that you're driving in, it's going to take a long time. The roads are built out of concrete, very thick reinforced concrete, and it takes forever for it to be done. Oh, and you're pretty much responsible for your own safety when you're travelling in these areas. So just, just use common sense. There will be many times during your journey where you'll find yourself growing impatient or getting frustrated. But whatever you do, do not sound your horn because you're angry at somebody. 
Sound your horn definitely if it's a situation where it's life threatening and you, you need to warn someone not to run into you. But don't do it because you're angry. People have been shot and killed in Thailand simply because they sounded their horn. I mentioned at the start that Thailand was a dangerous place to drive. Speeding and alcohol is a huge problem in Thailand. On average, 80 people per day die on the roads in Thai. Many of the accidents produce mass casualties. A bus rolling down the side of a mountain, killing 35 people. A truck ploughing into cars parked at traffic lights, killing seven. Or a minibus travelling at 140 on the tollway, crashes, catches on fire and kills 11 people. In conversations with many of my Thai friends, they've all admitted that they don't have an issue with going out, having dinner, drinking and driving home. In Thailand, there's no social stigma surrounding drink driving, so people don't have an issue with doing it. You can't be responsible for what other road users do, but you need to have an awareness that people are going to be speeding, people are going to be drink driving. At the end of the day, you need to keep yourself and your family safe when on the road. Don't fall into the habits of the Thai drivers. Just maintain the good driving habits from your home country. You'll always come across something that'll make you laugh when in Thai. My wife made the comment that this guy's sausages are flavoured by carbon monoxide and dust. Drivers not concentrating and near misses are very, very common. The very same you has stopped now to, to let the passengers in the back jump in the front. The police wouldn't let them go onto the tollway with people in the back. The roads are a place where young Thai people have fun. Here we've got guys on the motorbikes, no helmets, just chatting as they ride along. Crazy. Oh, that reminds me, I'd love a coffee. I enjoy drinking, Leo, but I sure as hell wouldn't want to be sleeping on it driving along. Here we're in Summit Pakan, just on the outskirts of Bangkok. You'll find all, all kinds of different traffic here. But regardless, you still need to be careful and stop for pedestrians with your hazard lights on. I'm not 100% sure what we have in front of us here. Looks like a, a guy and his, his bicycle. Not sure what he's got in there, but he's taking stuff to sell somewhere. We were so excited when they finished building the Sky Train station near, near our house. But that excitement turned to shock when we've read reports that it's going to be between one to three years before they actually have trains coming here. Thai time, patience, you need everything. It's not even safe for bicycles. I give the motorcycle taxi a quick nod and he knows it's safe to cross in front of me. Bangkok is an amazing city. All the positives certainly outweigh the negatives. This isn't a tourist area. What's that guy doing here? Not all vehicles maintain the same speed. In Australia, we call these guys garbos, but they don't ride on top of the truck. Look, this guy's bailed on his taxi after it's broken down, he's jumping in a new rig, and he's not dry air. It's not going to help him push it off the road. Since 1979, it's been illegal to ride in the back of a year, but it still happens every day. I still get scared every time I see girls sitting on the, the bike like that. Absolutely no way that I could do it. Now these guys are smart, watering their garden from the back of the truck. Thanks for watching, you're so JD. And don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, click like, and if you loved it, subscribe. Take care.